Hello all, in this particular tutorial, we will learn how to set up Oracle 90C Data Guard on Windows environment. This particular tutorial is been done on Oracle Database 19C and Windows Server 2019. You can also use Windows Server 2016. I have not tested this on 2022. However, I have tested this on 2016 and 2019. And you can also have one operating system on 2016 and another on 2019. So you can have a primary on 2016, the standby on 2019, that is fine. And before I move on to the next slide, I want to highlight that I want to tell you something that I have a bad cold. So if I if you hear me coughing, I'm really sorry for that. Now, what will not be covered in this particular tutorial is I will not explain how to install Windows and how to install Oracle database software. So we will the the machine that I have got has got I have got two machines set up one for the primary one for the standby and both of this particular machine has got the Oracle database software installed. There is no database. So what has been done is only the Oracle database 19C software has been installed. There is no database created. There is no listener created. So we have got two machines. Those two machines have got the Oracle home database software installed no database no listener and everything from this particular point from creating the listener creating the database we will see in this particular tutorial now the script used in this particular tutorial will be shared in the description so you if you look at the if you look for the link in the description you will find the script that has been used for this particular tutorial now before i move on i want to highlight one thing you need to make sure that both the primary and standby these two machines windows machines are able to communicate with each other they are able to talk to each other so you need to make sure that the connectivity between these two machines is fine and there is no firewall blocking between these two machines or server so the connectivity part is very very important this is how my configuration will look like now i will have the database name called aura and the DB name will be same on primary and standby. The instance name will also remain the same. The unique name on the primary and standby will be different. I will keep the unique name as Aura P and on the standby Aura S. And now if you want, you can keep the primary unique name as the same as the primary DB name. You can do that. However, just for, you know, for clear understanding, I have kept the DB name as Aura P on primary, Aura S on standby. There are two machines, both are Windows 2019 and Windows 2019 primary and Windows 2019 standby. These are the Windows 19 primary and Windows 19 standby is the host name of these two machines, which will be used in this particular configuration. Now, these are the high level steps. These are the high level steps that we will be doing in this particular tutorial. If you take a look at this, it looks like there are multiple steps that we need to do. And yes, there are multiple steps that we need to do. So setting up the data guard is a long exercise. It takes a bit of time for it to get it working. But once you get it working, you know that it works and you can repeat this setup again and again. Now, let's understand what are the high level steps. So we need to create the listener on both primary and standby. So we will be creating a listener on both primary and standby. We will be creating a primary database. We will be converting the primary database to archive log mode. We will be setting some database configuration parameters on the primary side. We will be enabling the standby data logs on primary. We will be setting the connectivity between primary and standby database using the TNS names aura. We will be duplicating the primary database on standby using the RMAN. We will be setting some database configuration parameters on standby and we will be starting MRP on standby. So if you take a look at the steps, create the listener on both, create primary database, convert the database to archive log, set some parameters on primary, enable standby data logs, set the connectivity between primary and standby, duplicate the primary database, set some more database configuration parameters on standby, start the MRP on standby. And if, if you reach to step number nine, at this point, your data guard environment will be up and running and the primary will be syncing the data to the standby environment. Now, 
So I would like to explain the detailed steps what we need to do at the primary. So at the primary, we will be creating a listener, creating the primary database, setting the DB unique name, setting the fast recovery area using these two particular parameters, converting the database to archive log mode, setting the DB flashback retention target, turning on the flashback, turning on the force logging. Then we will be also doing some more settings on the primary. So steps at primary continued. We will be configuring the log arc dash one for local archiving, log arc dash two for archiving to standby service. So here we will be specifying the net name, the net service name for the standby database, configuring the log archive config to include the primary and standby unique name, setting the file client to local service name, setting the file server to remote service name, configuring the standby file management to auto, setting the local listener, adding standby radio logs, and setting the standby database to maximize performance, and we will be creating the P file. Now, this particular P file will be transferred to the standby. This particular P file will be transferred to the standby, and we will use this particular P file to restore the database on the standby. So, the the next part is once we have got everything set up on the primary, once we have got all things, our primary is now ready. There are no more changes that we need to do on the primary. Let's go back. Let's go to the standby now. But before going to the standby, we need to make sure that we set up the listener.aura on primary and standby and TNS names.aura on primary and standby. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is setting up the connectivity between primary and standby. Now, I would like to highlight there is a note here. This is the most trickiest part and you need to get this right. Remember one thing that you might spend a lot of time to get this particular part working. And if you get this particular part working, rest of the database setup is pretty much simple. So getting the, <coughs> sorry, getting the connectivity between the primary and standby is most important. And I'm going to show you how I have done this. And again, as I mentioned, the script will be shared. So you can always refer to the script to see what, how I have done this. Now, once we have set the connectivity between the primary and standby, it's time to duplicate primary as standby. So we will be copying the P file to standby, the P file that we created from the primary. We will be changing only two parameters in the P file the DB unique name and local listener. We will be also copying the password file to standby. We will be starting the standby in no mount mode. We will be using the RMAN active duplication. So we will say RMAN duplicate target database for standby. We will be using this particular command to duplicate our database. Remember one thing, the primary database should be connected as target. Standby should be connected as auxiliary. This is very, very important. Now. Once we have duplicated database, we need to flip some parameters. So the log arc dash one for local archiving, log arc dash two for archiving to standby. The, this particular parameter will remain same. We will flip this particular parameters again on the standby. So file client will now point to the local service name, file server to the remote service name. This particular parameter will remain the same. This particular parameter will remain same. We will be setting the local listener and we will be starting the MRP, which is nothing but managed recovery process. At this moment, at this moment, if everything goes fine as per the plan, our data guard environment will be completely up and running and the primary will be sending the data to the standby. The primary will be sending the data to standby. So the, the, the next part, and this is optional. If you want to watch this, you can. If you don't want to watch it, you can skip this particular part. What we will be doing is we will be doing a failover from primary to standby and then we will be bringing the standby to primary. So at the end of this particular tutorial, our setup will look like how it was set up in the beginning. So the original primary will be original primary because we will be doing the failover from primary to standby and standby to primary. Now, I would like to explain some of the important parameters related to data guard. So there is a file client and file server. File client and file server, these particular values are nothing but the Oracle net service name. So these both are Oracle net service name and file stands for fetch archive log. And this file client specified the file 
client name that is used by the file service. So file client will be the local service name, net service name, and file server will be the net service name for the standby database. So if you whatever parameters you set on the primary, you will reverse them. You will reverse them on the standby. So if you set the file client as aura p and file server as aura s, then on the standby you will be setting this as aura s and here you will be setting this as aura p so you will reverse this particular parameters now the next particular parameter is log archive config which will be setting to the dg config and what we do here is we include the names of all the databases the unique names of all the databases which participate in the database data guard configuration so the log archive config is set to dg config and the this particular parameter is in turn includes the name of all the databases which participate in the data guard configuration standby file management is very very important parameter it enables or disable automatic standby file management so when when basically an operating system file add or deletion happens on the primary database, what how the standby reacts to that is controlled by this particular parameter. Now, the last concept is standby redo logs. So standby redo logs store the information received from the primary database. In case of failover, you will have less data loss than without standby redo logs. Advantage of standby redo logs is that every entry written into online redo logs of the primary database is transferred to standby site and written into standby redo logs at the same time. Therefore, you reduce the probability of data loss on the standby database. So if you configure the data guard, make sure to use the concept of standby redo logs. Now that we have seen everything, let's go ahead and let's do the exercise. So what I have got, as I told you, I got two machines. One is Win19 primary. So let me show it to you. And this particular screen, if you see this particular screen, it is in the, if you see the font, it is white color and background is green color. You can call the, I, I call this as green. So this is Win19 primary and this is the Windows 2019. You can see here Windows Server 2019 evaluation edition. And then on the standby also, on the standby also I got and this is the this particular screen if you see the font is in the yellow color uh, it's not white and the host name for this is host name for this is win19 standby and the background is the blue color and you can see this is also windows server 2019 data center evaluation edition so we got our two machines and one of the most important part that i told you is like this particular machines needs to be able to communicate to each other so if i now i'm on the standby and if i say ping to win prime primary i'm able to connect and if i go to the primary and if i say if i say win 19 standby if i go to the primary and if i say ping to the standby i should be able to connect so you can see the connectivity between these two machines have been established successfully the, the, the more the before I start, I want to I want to tell you something. If I do echo dollar Oracle home, so the environmental variables. Let's see if we have got this particular environmental variable set, and you can and you can see that it is not giving me any output. It is giving me so the, which means that this particular environmental variables are not set. Now this is completely optional. What I'm what I'm going to do is completely optional, but. What I'm going to do makes my life easier. It will make your life easier. And what I'm trying to say here is like every time you launch the Windows command prompt, you don't have to set the Oracle home, Oracle base and Oracle SID. These are the three variables that you need to set for your Oracle database to let you know that which Oracle home you are referring to and what is the Oracle SID that you are trying to connect to. And you, what we can do is like we can manually create these entries so now let me let me do something so let me go back and if i say edit system environmental variables and then i can say environmental variables and if i say new and here the the name is oracle home that is not the value oracle home and if i say click okay okay and if i now here i did not get any response but if i launch another command prompt and if i say this you can see now I'm getting the I'm getting the value, not the actual Oracle home. Here I got exactly same 
back, which means that this particular value was not set. But now if you see, I got the actual value of that particular environmental variable. Now I can manually go ahead and do this new, new, new. I can do this or what I can do is I can use a PowerShell. I can launch the PowerShell and I can do this using the PowerShell. So you can you, you are free to use whatever method that you want to use. So let's do this. So that's done on the primary and we need to do exactly same thing on the standby. And that's done. Let me close the PowerShell. That's the only thing that I wanted to do in the PowerShell. And let me close the PowerShell. Let me close all of this window. And let's see if we have got the, the, the Oracle SID. So echo. Oracle SID. And you can see it has been set to Aura. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. Base set to base and home would be set to home and if i do this exactly on the another standby machine you will be also able to see that these particular environmental variables are set on the standby as well so you can see the oracle home has been set oracle base has been set and oracle sid has been set the advantage of this setting this at the environmental variable level is every time you launch the command prompt you don't have to set this particular variable so now the 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 what i've done at this moment is i have actually only thing that i have done is i have set this environmental variables so i've set the oracle home i've set the oracle base and i have set the oracle sid and why i have set the sid as aura because if you remember my architecture says that the instance name will be Aura. So the instance name that I'm using is Aura and that is the reason why I've used that particular environmental variable. So now the next part is creating a listener on both the machines. So now there are two ways and before creating the listener, do you know, And okay, what I did not explain that my Oracle home is, my Oracle home is the C drive Oracle v19 database. So this is my Oracle home. Now you can have your Oracle software installed in a different directory and you might want to adjust this particular folder locations or the parameters as per your Oracle home. But my Oracle home is this particular C drive Oracle v19 database. And if you if I go under this and there will be a folder called network and under that there will be a folder called admin. This is the location where this is the location where the TNS names and listener name dot aura file resides. And you can see here TNS, neither the TNS names dot aura, neither the listener dot aura file is present on the primary. And if I go to the standby, if I go to the standby and if I go to the same location, you can see that I do not have this TNS names or listener dot aura. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a listener on primary. We are going to create a listener on the standby. So the at this moment only thing that i have done is setting this environmental variable now it's time to create a listener and i'm going to use port 1522 so to create the listener there are multiple options so what you can do is you can go to the start home wherever is the oracle home under that you will find the net configuration assistant so let net configuration assistant right click on it say more say run as administrator so under oracle home Look for net configuration assistant, click on more, click on run as administrator and launch it and say yes. And then listener configuration and say next, add next. If you want, you can change the name. If you want to keep this default name, that's fine. Next, use a different port. I'm going to use 1522. Next. Would you like to configure another listener? No. Next. And now you can see listener and TNS names dot aura file appeared here. This is one way. Now on the stand, you can you 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 have another option. You can launch the command prompt as administrator. So I've launched the command prompt as administrator. Let me clear this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to say net CA. So you can launch the command prompt as administrator, and you can see it actually launches the same utility and again here you can see that we don't have the listener dot aura or tns names dot aura so let's go ahead and create those entries so listener configuration yes 
add yes listener if you want to change it you can change it if you want to keep the same you can keep the same use another port i'm going to use the same port on primary and standby click on next would you like to configure another listener no click on next and then what's going to happen is going to bring it's going to start the listener It's going to configure the listener you can see it has configured the listener and it has configured the tns name dot all file and it's going to start the listener now if i if i if i open this particular file let's let me open this particular file let me open this in notepad plus plus and you can see here that we got a listener with 1522 and we got here as well if i open this you can see we got listener with 1522 now the listener file will look exactly same on the primary and standby so only difference is here on the primary it will refer the host name will be win19 primary and we can get rid of this we don't need this we can get rid of this so i'm going to just keep the listener i'm going to keep it very simple so i'm going to clean this entire thing so the listener file is exactly same if i if you compare this particular file then you will find that except this host name everything else remains the same between primary and standby and i have got rid of all of the other things now what we are going to do is we are now going to set up so we have created a listener on primary we have created the listener on standby so that's all good so what we are going to do now is we are going to create some of the directories so we need to create the directories on primary and standby we don't have to create it on standby right now we can create it while restoring however i'm going to do that on both so basically what i'm doing here is like i am going to create the directory in d drive and i could do this new folder etc i could do this manually however instead of doing this manually let me do this so all that i'm doing is i'm running three commands make dir commands pretty simple so i'm you can see at the background an aura data folder under aura data there will be another folder called aura and under aura there will be another folder called fra aura is the name of the instance so all of these database files will be under this and FRA will be configured under this. Now, again, let me repeat, we should never keep FRA on the same drive as the Oracle database uh, data files or the radio logs because they should be on a different location. However, this is a testing machine. So this is okay. So now that I have run all of these commands, let's go back. Let's see the under aura data we have a folder called aura and under that a folder called fra so i'm going to do this on the i'm going to do this on the primary and i'm going to do this on standby as well so let's do this on standby as well and before doing that let me show it to you that you can see that under d drive we don't have a aura data and if i if i run this commands then you should be able to see that whatever structure that we created on primary exactly same structure i have created on standby so the directory structure has been created now it's time to now it's time to create the database on primary and this step will take a longest because the database creation in oracle does take time so now you can you can what you can do you have multiple options you can launch command prompt as administrator and you can launch a command called dbca which will launch the database configuration assistant or you can do you can go to the oracle home and under this you can click on this database configuration assistant more and run as administrator and that's going to launch this particular utility for creating your database now let's go ahead with this particular option so we are going to create our direct database we are going to create our database so let's say create database uncheck the choose advanced configuration so we are going to choose advanced configuration click on next <coughs> so <coughs> sorry oracle single instance database general purpose or transaction processing we'll choose the second option click on next we will we are not going with the container database now if you wanted to set up with the container that's fine but we are not using the container so let's use the let's use the name the database name as aura sid as aura so we are going to keep both as same then use where we are going to store the database so we are going to store the database in d drive aura data aura so we are going to store the database under this location so we are going to use the following next uh, we are not going to set, set up the fast recovery area or archive log next we are going to choose the default listener that we created the 1522 next 
we don't have to choose anything if you want to reduce this it's your choice if you want to if you have a pretty good system you can keep it i don't have a good system i'm i'm reducing this so i'm setting that pg sga as 2 gb pg as 512 next we are not going to touch any of the other parameters so i have not touched this particular parameters i i don't want the em express so i'm going to uncheck that use the password and i'm going to use the password as password so i'm going to use the password as password and that's going to give me a warning that it does not meet the security requirement which is fine so you can see here it does not meet the requirement which is fine i'm going to click accept that particular because this is a testing machine never do this in the production and you can review all of these particular parameters and if all looks good so you can maximize this and you can take a look at all the settings and if everything looks good to you if everything looks good to you click on the finish and what is going to do in the background what is going to do is it's going to create our database called aura into aura data aura is going to create our database first database is going to create and that is going to take some time now the database creation in oracle takes a little bit of time so what i'm going to do i'm going to pause this video and come back when the database is created so the database is still getting created so on windows system for some reason the and my machines are not that really powerful so probably it takes a longer time but however the database is getting created while the database is getting created i would like to show it to you that if you see here under the aura data aura it has created the control files three read logs the system these are the dbf files for all of our database and anytime now the database will it will say that the database has been created so let's give it a minute and wait for the database to get created now once this particular database is created we will be setting so this particular database will be in the no archive log mode the flashback will be turned off and the force logging will be off because we have not set these particular parameters while creating this particular database so we will be going through all of these particular steps once the database is created so give it a minute for this particular database to get created anytime from now it will get created i just want you to see that otherwise if you if you if 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 i skip that then you might think that i have created the database in background and that's not the case and i want to show you that everything that i do so and another thing is that everything that i I've, i'll be doing will be on this particular screen so there is nothing on the background that i will be i will not be running any single command in the background now so you can see the database has been created so let's go ahead and connect to our database so let's clear this and if i say sql plus as sysdba and if i say select name from v dollar database our database will be aura and you can see it is aura and if i say show parameter name you will be able to see that everything is aura aura instance name is aura etc now <coughs> sorry now the the one thing that this particular sorry this particular database is in the no, no archive log mode so if i say archive log list you will see that it is in the no archive mode so what i've done i've set up this particular connectivity here so let me connect to this particular database and this is basically if i show you the properties it's all it is doing is like it is connecting to the primary at port 1522 with the sid aura if you do the test it says success and let's say connect and once i'm connected i'm going to run some of the queries to show you how my database looks like so you can see here name and db unique name matches it's in the read write mode log mode is no archive flashback on is turned off force logging is turned off and we need to convert this archive log to on flashback no to yes and force logging no to yes so we are going to set the sum of the parameters and the way i'm going to do this is i'm going to run this particular script and this particular script will be shared with you so first thing is setting the unique name to aura p then setting the remote login password to exclusive setting the fra parameters then shutting down the database starting in the mount mode converting the database to archive log opening the database 
verifying the database is in the archive mode, setting the DB flashback retention target, turning on the flashback, turning on the force logging, setting the log arc dashed one to the to use the recovery file dashed, setting the log arc dashed two to the name of the service net service name for the standby, enabling both the the dashed one and dashed two. Setting the log arc config to DG config and including the names of unique names of primary and standby. The setting the file client to the primary, file server to the standby. We will reverse these particular parameters on the standby. St setting the standby file management to auto. Setting the local listener to Win19 primary and registering the database with the listener. <coughs> Sorry. We will be also adding the standby redo logs. So we'll be adding the standby redo logs and then we will be setting the, the database and this particular particular parameter we need to, we, I'm setting on both so that it, it is same on both primary and standby. And finally, we'll be creating the P file from SP file, which will be used to restore this particular database on the standby. So these are the steps that we are going to do on the primary. And these are the exactly same steps. So if you remember, these are the exactly same step that I covered here. So all of these particular steps are in that particular script one by one. So let me go back to that particular database and let's say host CLS and I, I've got that particular script. So let me go to the DG and here I got, if you if I do this dir and if I say type setup this, you can see the same script, whatever script I showed you, the same script I have got here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, I'm going to copy that particular script and I'm going to clear the screen, connect as SQL plus as sysdba. And before connecting, I just want to show you one more time. So let me show you one more time that this particular database, you can see log mode is no archive log. The flashback on is no, post logging is no, and the unique name is same as the, the database name. So we are going to change all of this. So let's go ahead and run that particular script. And I think I, I copied that particular name, but I think I must have, I'm going to copy it one more time. So now I'm going to say, and I'm going to say at that, and then it's going to go back, it's going to run that particular script one by one. And because it does it after setting these particular parameters, it starts, shut down the database and starts the database in the mount mode. This particular step is going to take some time. So if you see here right now, what is happening in the background is it's actually shutting down the database and I'm going to show it to you. It will show that database has been closed or unmounted. So that part and is going to start and that particular step you can see closed and dismounted. So that particular step takes time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause and come back once the database is about to start. So as you can see, the database was started and the database was started and then it converted the, the, the unique name to RRP. The database has been set to archive mode and it changed all of this, added, added four standby redo logs. You can see four, five, six, seven, and then it created the P file at the end. So the script at the primary has been completely ran. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here. And if you remember this, our unique name is Aura. Log R log mode is no, flashback is no, force logging is no. If I rerun this particular query, the unique name would be changed to Aura P because this is on the primary. This log mode will be archive log, flashback on will be yes, force logging will be yes. So let's run this particular query. And you can see that this particular parameters are now changed as per our script. So at this moment, all the work on the primary is done. And before saying that, I also want to show you. So if we run a query on the standby V dollar standby logs, you will be able to find that these are the four, five, six, seven. These are the standby logs. So we have added the standby redo logs as well. So we are all good on the primary. 
The next part is we are now going to duplicate the primary on the standby. But before we duplicate, before we duplicate this particular database, we have a lot to do and that is the listener and the TNS names.ora because the we are going to use RMAN active duplication. So we need to be able to connect to our primary. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, what we are going to do is we are going to we are go going to set the connectivity. So where is our TNS names.ora and listener.ora? It is under the Oracle home. So let's go to the Oracle home. Under Oracle Home, there will be a directory called Network and under that, there will be a directory called Admin. So let's go to this particular directory on the primary and let's go and I think it's already open on the standby. So that's fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the, I'm going to set the static registration for the, in the listener. So this is the listener and I'm going to set the Oracle Home. So this is the Oracle Home and this is the SID. So I'm going to set the static registration for our database in the in this particular file, in the listener.ora file. And exactly same, whatever I do here, I will do this on the standby as well. So if I, I will open this particular listener and I'll do this exactly same. I'm going to save this listener file. I'm going to save this listener file. So I've done the changes on the listener, but once you do the changes on listener, you need to reload your listener and you have to make sure that you you do this as admin so this is okay i'm going to terminate this this is old job so this is fine so what i'm what i'm going to do now is i've launched on the primary on the primary i've launched the command prompt and before before running the reload let me show you lsnr ctl status it shows that we got we uh, we got this aura which is registered and the reason why this got registered is because we have set the we have set the static uh, we have set the win19 primary if, if you remember the local listener so if you say show parameter name you can see that service name we have sorry show parameter local listener if you see we have set this local listener into this local listener or what we what we what we, we can do is we can reload this so we'll say lsnr ctl reload to whatever changes that we have done so i'm going to do this on primary and i'm going to do this on standby as well so if i if you say lsnr ctl status here lsnr ctl status you can see we don't have the aura we don't have the aura here it's not registered and we have we definitely have edited the listener.aura to add the static registration. So let's go ahead and reload our listener. To do that, we are going to say LSNR CTL reload. And then we are going to use the status command. And now we see you see that we have got aura here. <coughs> Sorry. So now that we got we got now we got the listener fine so i'm going to i'm going to just get rid of this tns names dot aura i'm going to blank it out and i'm going to blank the tns name dot aura here as well i'm going to blank it out so i've cleared the tns name dot aura on primary i cleared the tns names dot aura on standby right now it is blank so if you want to see it you can see tns names dot aura is 0 kb and here also if i close this TNS names aura is zero. So I have cleared the TNS names aura on primary and standby. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the connectivity for our primary and standby. So I'm going to edit this TNS names aura. And here for the standby, at this moment, I'm going to keep this as aura. And I'll explain you why. So let me save this. So that's done. And let me go to the standby and open the TNS names aura and let me save this. So and let me close this because we really want to make sure that it gets saved. So let me close all of this and let's open the TNS names aura. And here the before, because we have not at restored this particular database, which means the service name will be still be the original service name, which is aura. So we can't use the aura. Yes. So before we restore, before we restore the database, we have to keep the service name as aura. And I do not know whether I have done the similar change on the standby. If I'm not done, I need to do that change as well. So let's, and yeah, I was right that I've not done this. 
So let me save this, close this particular file. So now, now that now let's verify that we are able to connect using. So let's do TNS ping to Aura P, which will point to the primary. So you can see Aura P is pointing to Win19 primary. And if I do TNS ping Aura S, it is pointing to Win19 standby. So if I do this on the from the primary, so I've done this from the standby. If I do this from the primary also, it should pretty much work. If you want to see that, you can see me doing, but it is not required because I remember, I think that I have done it properly. So if I do Aura P here and Aura S, you can see Aura P is pointing. And if you want me to show you the TNS names of Aura, Aura P is pointing to Win19 primary, Aura S is pointing to Win19 standby port is exactly same and exactly same file exactly same tns name dot aura is matching on the primary and standby so this exactly same file has been so the same configuration aura p with 1522 on win19 primary aura s on win19 standby 1522 on here so that's all good so now that we have got and we have verified that the the machines are able to connect you can see the machines are able to connect we have done the tns ping where is that TNS ping? Yeah, so we have done the TNS ping on both the primary and standby. We are good to duplicate the database. But before duplicating the database, we need to do something. And that is basically copying the P file and the password file. And where is the P file and where is the password file? So that is under the Oracle home database location. So if you go to, and we need to copy this from the primary. So let's go to the primary and copy two files, init file and password file. I'm going to put this in a shared location. So I'm going to copy this in a shared location and go to the standby and from the shared location, I'm going to copy this to the Oracle home database location. So you can see currently we do not have any init file, neither we have any password file. So I'm going to copy that here. Once you copy that, I, if you remember, I told you that we need to do changes to this particular file and only two changes. One is the is the unique name and that I will be changing to Aura Yes. And the, the local listener, this is the second change which I will be changing to Win19 standby. So these are the only two parameters that we are going to change. Now, since this particular machine did not have any SID, any so we need to create an Oracle service we need to create an Oracle service before restoring. We need to create an Oracle service. And to do that, we are going to use the Aura Deem utility. So let me launch the command prompt into administrator. And here is the utility Aura Deem new SID Aura start mode manual P file. This is the P file that we copied from the primary. So this is the P file that we copied from the primary. And we are creating an Oracle service using this or our deem utility that's done the instance has been created we can control c this yeah so if it, it doesn't get that's fine we can launch the command prompt in administrator once again this is fine and now let's go back let's go back and what we are going to do now is we are going to connect this is on the standby so you can see blue screen so right now i'm on the standby and now I can say startup no mount because we need to restore the database. So to restore the database, our, our, our standby should be in the no mount mode. We are going to duplicate. So we are going to Armin active duplicate. So we are going to put the database into no mount mode now. So this is the first time the instance is starting on the standby. So it's going to take some time. So now before and this is the command. This is the command. So we are going to, as I told you, the if you remember the ppt i told you that the primary should be connected as target and standby should be connected as auxiliary so here you can see armen target aura p as as the primary and the standby is aura yes and we will be using this duplicate command so this is the command that i'll be running duplicate target database for standby from active database do recover sp file set db unique name to aura yes command is standby. So this is the command that I will be running. So let's go back and let's do 
alter system register for it to register with uh, listener and now let's see here that lsnr ctl status and we got aura here that looks good so now what we are going to do is we are going to we are going to restore this particular database and we have already created the directories we have already created the directories so we are good so let's connect uh, to the primary from the standby and i'm doing the restore from the standby so i'm connecting to the target which is primary auxiliary which is the standby so auxiliary is standby target is primary let's connect to this and here you will be able to see that the standby is in the not not mounted so remember we have started this in no mount mode so that is that looks good it is in no mount mode and the target is is in the open state sorry <coughs> sorry so that looks good and if if we if everything looks good then our duplicate command should work fine if if the connectivity or something is not right in the tns names dot aura if something is not right in the tns name dot aura then the duplicate command will not work so let's run this and let's see and looks like looks like yes looks like the everything has gone well and the duplicate command is right now running and it's going to what's going to do is going to duplicate the primary database to this location to this particular location so the this particular again the duplicate takes some time sorry so the duplicate command rman duplicate takes some time so what i'm going to do i'm going to pause this video and i'm after we, we will see that on the standby under this location you will see the system files the control file etc once the duplicate command is done so i'm going to pause the video for the duplicate command to complete and i'll come back once the duplicate command is completed so as you can see the all the here the restore is still running and finished duplicate is completed and if i now go here you can see control file the sysoc system undo and users is all good so the restore is completed the rman active duplicate is complete at this moment so now now that this particular part is completed so that we have duplicated the database that is good what we are going to do is we are now going to flip some parameters so whatever parameters we set on the primary we are going to flip them for this particular and for for that what i've done is i've set this particular script this is the second script that we need to run at the standby so here you can see log dash one again same log dash two to the primary now on the primary it was on the standby now it is primary fail client and fail server is reversed the local listener is set I, I, we have already set it in the p file however let's set it one more time register and then finally start the mrp process so you hear alter database recover manage standby database disconnect from session start the mrp process and if if everything goes fine let's do this so now let's go back let's go to that particular script so that particular script is here and i'm going to show it to you that it is exactly sorry and you can see that whatever i have explained this the the exactly same script is here finally it starts mrp it sets all of this particular parameter so let's connect let's copy this let's connect to the database this is on the standby at run this particular script and then it will it will set all of this and finally it's going to create a file it's going to create the p file and it's going to start the mrp so you can see now the this let's let's go what i've done here is i have already set up the the setting for the the standby and you can see that 1522 aura yes let's test this success connect to this and if i run exactly same query now sorry that's not exactly same query i need to run i need to run this particular query 
let's take this let's take this if i run this particular query on the primary it says failed destination which is fine and here it says that the switchover status is not allowed because of the failed destination and he, this particular role database role is primary read write aura p is primary aura s is physical standby and i have opened this in read only mode so that we will be able to query this so this is active data guard and at this moment the switchover status is not allowed physical standby read only with apply and this is the aura p with failed destination so because we did those settings in the beginning so let's try let's see let's go back and let's see if we can run this particular script and it's going to fix this so all that i'm doing is switching the log file altering archive log and seeing what is our whether this particular database actually gets so let's exit clear connect to the so this is on the primary and what all that i'm doing is switching the log file archiving the log current and verifying if the the if the fail destination goes off and you can see that the the switchover status is now to standby let's go back to here so here switchover status was failed destination now you can see it is to standby so looks like we have fixed that failed destination error and now if i run this here it is still basically nothing has changed so now what we are going to do is basically we are going to we are going to do some transaction so let's before doing some transaction let's verify how our database looks like so here it says all of this are applied is equal to no we are fine with that so let's let's actually let's close all of this let's do let's create let's create a table called employee and we will insert we will insert two records into this employee table this is the testing part so here i'm creating a table called employee and i'm inserting two employees called rock and water before doing that let me go to the standby and let me see if that particular table called employee is there on the standby so you can see table or view does not exist so we don't have any table or view and what i'm going to do now i'm going to create this particular table and insert this particular i don't i don't have to do this it's fine so let's run up to this let's run up to this let's run create table insert commit and select star from employee so let's run all of this so now i've got two two employees rock and water in our organization let's go to the standby here it says table or view does not exist let's see and you can see that on the standby we got those records so and if i want to show you that this is really a standby so you can see this is aura yes and this is aura p so whatever transactions we created on the primary looks like those transactions have flown to the standby so we we have successfully we have successfully replicated that if i now delete from employee so if i say delete from employee and if i say commit so let's and if i say commit let's do this and if i go here and if i say select star from employee the employee table is still there but there are no employees because we have deleted them from here so looks like our replication is standby from this primary the records are flowing to standby now it's time to actually now it's time to actually do the switch over but before doing the switch over i want you to do a simple setting so what do you need to do go to this tns names dot aura and change this aura yes to aura yes and again on the primary also so this is i done, done this on the primary and let's go to the standby and on the standby also okay so i'm i'm getting confused so yeah so on the standby also change this to or is so the this service name change to the matching so change it to the unique name on the primary and standby and again this is exactly same so whatever changes i did on the primary 
the same changes I have done on the standby. So exactly same. So I can just copy this particular file, delete this, delete this and put it here and it will be exactly same. So now we are ready to do the switch over. So before doing the switch over, let's let's look at how our database looks like. So the this is RRP. This is two. This is currently the role is primary. RRP role is primary, and this is RRS, which is standby. So remember, yes is standby, P is primary. So this is our original configuration the way we have set. Now I'm going to make the RRP as standby, physical standby and RIS as primary. So to do that, let's run the run the failover command. So first we are going to convert the primary to standby and then convert the standby to primary. So let's do this. Let's run this particular commands. So what we, what we are saying here, I'm going to show it to you. So alter database commit to switch over to standby. So the primary we are going to switch. Let me. So the primary we are going to switch to standby and we are going to start the MRP process. So MRP process is right now running on the standby. We are going to start the MRP process on the standby on the original primary, which will become the standby. So we are going to switch over and we are going to start the MRP process and then we are going to convert the standby. So we are going to stop the MRP process. So cancel finish and then we are going to convert the standby to primary using alter database command commit. So exactly same commands. If you look at these commands, they are pretty simple pretty similar. So let's do this. Let's run, take this, all of this command. This we have to run on the primary. So let's go to the primary and clear SQL plus as sysdba before running. So, and actually I have a, that particular, so the database role is already part of that. So you can see this is the primary. This is the primary and I'm running this particular commands on the primary. So I'm doing this on the primary. Now this particular commands is going to take time because what it does, it actually shuts down the system, starts up the database and then it switch over. So it takes some time. I'm going to pause the video and come back once this is done. So the primary is, is, uh, started and we are going to we are starting the mrp process as you can see in the background the mrp process is being started on the new standby so the, if you see here before this it was primary to standby now it is physical standby to primary primary to standby physical standby to primary so we have converted the primary to physical standby as you can see and if i run exactly same query here so this particular was saying that this is primary let's run the same query here and now it will say that this is physical standby so you can see that the rrp is now saying as physical standby we still need to convert this to this is the currently physical standby we need to convert this to primary so let's do that and again i'm going to run similar commands on standby so i'm going to go to this <coughs> sorry connect to connect here on this. This is the standby. So I'm going to take this and this is the physical standby. So I'm saying it, stop the MRP, cancel the MRP, finish the MRP and switch over to primary. And then the, at this, once this is done, what will happen is the RRP, RRP has already converted to physical standby. Aura, yes, which is physical standby will become primary. And then we will do some transactions on the new primary which is aura yes the new primary and we will see if those transactions are going again this is completely optional you don't have to watch this because the actual data guard setup is already been done but if you really want to see if the test failover and failback is working you can watch this particular video if you don't want to watch it that's perfectly fine and what i'm going to do at the end i'm going to bring back we, I'm, I'm going to bring back the RRP. So right now RRP has become the standby. Once the testing has been completed that we are able to move the data from standby to primary, I'm going to move back the RRP to primary again. So let's, let's see that. Let's wait for this to complete. And you can see the, the standby is still starting up. 
So let's give it a minute. So this is not a standby. This is new primary. And you can see before running this convert conversion, this database role was physical standby. Now the database is primary resolvable gap, which should be fine because Oracle is going to resolve the gap on its own. So let's go to the new standby and let's see if we have got any records and you can see we have deleted the records. Remember, we deleted the records. So there was nothing in this. So let's go back and let's insert, insert these two records on the new standby. Before doing that, let's run this particular command. This is the new primary. Aura, yes, is now primary. S is primary. P is standby. And let's insert these particular records. And then let's not delete them. And then let's see. Okay. This is the this is the problem with my keyboard. So give it a minute. Okay. So let's insert these particular records, commit them, and switch the archive logs. So let's done all of that. Let's go back to the primary. And let's see if those two records, you can see rock and water. So whatever transactions we did. So let's see if actually, let's, it's not only that, we will add a new employee. So let's add a new employee on the standby. So let's add the new employee on the standby. So let's done that. So now I've got three employees on the, sorry, not the, the standby, which is the, sorry. Let's add the new employee on the new primary, which is old standby. And here you can see that new air has joined and we had only two records on the on the standby. Let's see if the air has come and you can see even the air has appeared. So we have done the failover and even after the failover, even after the failover, we can see that whatever records are now, whatever transactions we do on the new primary old standby, they are going back to the, the old primary or the new standby. So that looks good. And now we are going to flip this and this is again optional, but this is just to show that we have done the failover, but can we fill it back? So now I'm going to run this. So I'm going to convert. This is the primary. I'm going to convert this. I'm going to convert this particular database. So I'm going to convert this to to the primary so i'm so sorry so this is the primary i'm going to convert this to standby so i'm going to make the old original standby as original standby and original primary as original primary so this is the final step again you don't have to watch this but this is just for safe this is just to prove that failover is also working fail back is also working optional you don't want to watch it you, if you don't want to watch it, don't want to have to watch it. Exactly same commands, whatever I ran to switch over, I'm just going to run them, those exactly same commands. So I'm good, I have run these commands on the new primary or old standby, and I'm going to do this on the, on the RRP or the new standby, and I'm going to make it the new primary. So let's wait for these things to finish. So the, the standby is, is uh, and so the the standby the primary has been converted to standby and i'm starting the mrp process so the primary the the aura s is being converted to the standby and i'm starting the mrp while this is happening i will go ahead and do the switch over on the so i'm going to switch over the primary the sorry the standby to primary so i'm going to switch over the the so this i'm doing on the primary i'm switching over the primary to sorry this i'm doing on physical standby which is win 19 primary old primary so i'm going to bring back the old primary which is currently as a physical standby to the primary so i'm doing that so let's wait for that to finish So the new primary is coming up and now let's let's go back here and let's take a look at our status of the database. So the deep RIS has become the standby, the, the way we set up in the beginning and the RRP should become the primary. So RRP has become the primary. So looks like everything is good. And now 
just for testing again not mandatory but just for testing we will do some transactions so now let me let let's see how many employees we got so we have three employees let's add employee four with the name called plant and let's add employee five with the name called river and before doing that let's see how many employees we got on the standby so the standby matches to the primary so let's add new employees called plant and river with employee id 4 and 5 we have got three employees so let's do that and let's go let's verify that these two new employees are now part of our primary go to the standby so this is the standby and i'm going to show you that this is physical standby and let's say select star from employee and we got the plant and river so we got the four employee four and five so even after now the original primary is the original database which we set as the primary is primary so we have done the fail back fail over fail back fail over so we have done all of that and we are we we can see that whatever changes that we do on primary are replicating to the standby so this was the this was i believe i do not know how long this recording is going on but this was the tutorial on how to how to set up the Oracle 19C on data guard on Windows and we used Windows Server 2019. I have tested this on Windows Server 2016. I have also tested this on Windows Server 2016 and 2019, which means one database running on 2016, another on 2019. I have tested this and this particular tutorial was done using Oracle Database 19C. I hope you enjoyed this particular tutorial. I hope after watching this particular tutorial, you will be able to set up the data guard in your production environment or probably if you want to learn it in your personal home lab. Again, thank you for watching. See you in next tutorial. And as always, if you do like the videos that I'm uploading, if you do like the content that I'm uploading, do subscribe to my channel. Your subscription means a lot to me. Thank you and see you in next tutorial. Till then, bye-bye.